let's just start with it's a big week finally here after having to wait two years and um this is like this is like christmas for you times six isn't it <laughs> it's something to that effect right it's not unlike the week of the state tournament um where you know we basically spend four days at wells fargo arena this time it's three days at the enterprise center in st louis and um, you know, it's a lot of the best wrestling in the country, division one wrestling. And, uh, you know, in some cases, at some of these weights, we're going to see some of these guys that are maybe some of the best in the world as well. So it's, uh, it's really cool. It's, it's really exciting. I think there's a lot of wrestling fans, at least the vibe that I've gotten this week is they're teetering somewhere between like antsiness, excitement, and nervousness, just because of everything that happened last year. And I know like, you know, the Valley hoop situation with Northern Iowa, um, that has a lot of people on edge, you know, how is NCAA wrestling going to handle that? What, what's going to happen? Um, you know, if, if there is a positive case, you know, we've already had a handful of people, not because of COVID, um, you know, withdraw from the tournament. So what does that mean moving forward? Um, but it's going to be exciting, man. The, the action is going to be awesome. It's, it's, you know, I, last year was supposed to be this big celebration of the sport of wrestling. Um, this year, I think it, it'll, it will still be just, you know, not as many people in the building, uh, but the wrestling itself, the actual on the mat action is going to be tremendous. Before we dive into it, I really want to ask, how big is it in an Olympic year? How much does that amplify what we could see on the mat with some of these top end wrestlers? Yeah, it's it's big. It's so there, it's a little bit of give and take, right? Because I know that um, with the Olympic trials this year, um, NCAA champions, NCAA title winners on Saturday night um, will actually punch a ticket to the Olympic trials. Um, this is one of those qualifying events, I suppose, for the Olympic trials. So, um, you know, the 10 champs, they'll get to pick which weight they want to compete at at the Olympic trials, which are set for April 2nd, 3rd. They're going to be down in Texas um, just two weeks after after this weekend. So um, it'll be a pretty quick turnaround. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, we'll see some we'll see some guys that I think will be in contention to perhaps make a run at the Olympic team. Um, there's also other guys that, that didn't compete this year that maybe couldn't compete this year because of COVID situations or whatever the case may be, um, who who probably could be in that same boat, right? There's, um, you know, there's a handful of elite college level wrestlers who are just going to make push for those international senior level stuff. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, it's really cool. It's just kind of, you know, it's like the next step in just, you know, what's been a really busy but exciting wrestling season all the same. And um, yeah, I, I, people, people kind of forget that, you know, oh, hey, the Olympic trials are looming two weeks away from this. But, um, you know, I, th I think, I hope it'll get talked about plenty as, as we go through the weekend for sure. Well, it's going to be fun. And, and first person that comes to mind with that is Spencer Lee, obviously a, a guy that has Olympic hopes this year. Um, he's one of the 10 Hawkeye wrestlers that made this field along with, you know, eight from the Cyclones and then six from you and I. Uh, correct me if my numbers are off on that. Um, but, you know, Spencer at 125 is the clear cut top seed. I don't think there's any doubt about it that this is his title to lose this year, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's it's been, you know, as long as Spencer Lee's in the bracket, he's probably going to be the strong favorite. And and he really, I mean, dating back to, you know, I think just his last 30 matches, he's really flipped a switch. Um, you know, I know it was, you know, he won the Big Ten title this past year. He won the Big Ten title last year as well. Um, you know, the year before that, he finished second. And then that was, that's really his last collegiate loss. He's, he's won his last 30 matches. He, um, you know, he has bonus the vast majority of those um, opponents, I think all but three, I think he's won by bonus points, which, you know, major technical fall pin, um, you know, he's just, he's taken his, he's taken his wrestling to another level, um, you know, and he's made the comment several times before as well, too, that, you know, this, this is a guy that's got world and Olympic aspirations. And, um, you know, if he really wants to achieve those goals, he, you know, he needs to be able to take care of business, you know, when it comes to his collegiate opponents. And that's nobody I don't think has been any better than him really over the last two seasons. So, um, you know, he's a Hodge Trophy winner last year, which is college wrestling's equivalent of the Heisman Trophy. Um, you know, he was he won that that um, that award in a landslide last year. And, and he's only he's been just as good, if not better, this past year. Um, looked really, really good at the Big Ten tournament after such a long layoff. Um, yeah, he's the absolute favorite, not just to win this week at 125 pounds, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people um, in wrestling circles that that think Spencer can not only make the Olympic team, but perhaps do some damage at the Olympics as well in Tokyo. So um, high expectations for him. But I mean, he's had those really ever since he's committed to the Hawkeye program. So this is nothing new for him. Yeah. And then I've got to ask who out of that Hawkeye lineup that made this field really excites you? What weight class are you excited about to see the Hawkeyes kind of wrestle? There's a lot of them, man. There's, you know, I, we could talk about the four number one seeds. There's Spencer Lee. There's there's Jade Nyerman at 141 who transferred in from Mizzou last year. Um, 141 is a pretty exciting weight. And, and Jade Nyerman has kind of established him himself as the guy to beat this year. Alex Marinelli at 165. 
Um, you know, this is, the, I think, the, the third year in a row. He's the number one seed at the NCAA championships. We didn't get to see the tournament last year, but, um, you know, he's always been up there. Can he finally break through and, and get to the finals on Saturday night? Michael Kemmer at 174. Um, you know, that's a guy. He's a two-time All-American. He was Big Ten runner-up last year, Big Ten champ this year. Um, you know, 174. Um, maybe not as wide open of a weight. I think there's probably only a handful of guys that can probably hang with Kemmer. Um, you know, but then there's, you know, some of these other guys, um, you know, I think there's real fun opportunities there for a guy like Tony Cassiope, um, mm -hmm. at heavyweight. I know that that heavyweight, it's kind of, you know, the top two guys with Minnesota's Gable Steveson and Michigan's Mason Paris, and then kind of a crowd for third, but, um, Cassiope can kind of cement his spot as kind of the top of that crowd for third this week. Um, Max Mirren's a guy that, you know, it, there's a quality to, to his week coming up, I think, because he didn't wrestle very well at the big 10 tournament. Um, but he has a pretty quick opportunity to maybe correct some of the things that he did wrong a couple weeks ago uh, pretty early in this tournament if he comes out guns blazing on Thursday. Um, so, Yeah, and on that note, I mean, Ironman comes to mind because he beat the two-seed Nick Lee earlier this, this year in the Big Ten Championship, obviously. And I, I know a lot of people want to see a rematch of that just to see how that one kind of shakes out. Does that one excite you at all? Oh, I think that'd be pretty awesome. His his path really to the finals, if if it kind of goes the way that I think it'll go, he's going to have a lot of exciting matches. Um, you know, I don't I don't see too much trouble for him during Thursday's first couple of rounds, but you know, on Friday morning he could see Nebraska's Chad Red, who he's beaten twice this year. But um, Chad Red from Nebraska, he's an All American. He's really talented. In the semifinals, he could see either Oklahoma's Dom Demas, who's the Big 12 champ. Or, um, you know, NC State's Tariq Wilson, who's the ACC champ, um, you know, and then if he gets to the finals, he, you know, if he's able to kind of clear that treacherous path, he could see Nick Lee from Penn State, he could see uh, Rutgers Sebastian Rivera, um, you know, there's a couple other guys on the bottom side of that bracket that could come out, but I think those two are probably the front runners and, and they put on one heck of a show in the Big Ten semifinals um, a couple weeks ago as well. So either one of those guys, I know, you know, Ironman's a competitor, man, he's, he's chomping at the bit to get his hands on either one of those guys and, um, you know, I think Iowa fans might want to see him beat Nick Lee again just because it's Iowa over Penn State and there's there's that little thing going on there. Well, and I think you hit on something that's kind of fun. People forget about these guys aren't just wrestling Joe Blow. They're wrestling other conference champions having to get to these finals. You know, it's every match, like you said, can be electric. The other one that I'm kind of curious to see is Nelson Brands coming in as a 12 seed at 184. You know, he could run into you and I's uh, Parker Keck Eisen in the quarters, which could be fun, a little in-state rivalry there too. And Keck Eisen, someone you, you profiled this week too. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's kind of the next in line for, um, you know, kind of the next Northern Iowa wrestling star. Right. We've seen some really talented guys and, you know, from you and I in recent years and and really at 184 pounds, you know, Drew Foster was a two time All-American. He won an NCAA title in 2019 out in Pittsburgh. Um, last year it was Taylor Lujan. He was a big 12 champ. He was actually the number one seed at the NCAA championships before COVID kind of forced their cancellation. So now you bring in this guy, Parker Keck Eisen, who he's originally from Wisconsin. Um, you know, he's, he comes from a club that's run by uh, Ben Askren, who was a multiple time NCAA champ from Mizzou um, and his brother, Max Askren, who was also a national champ from Mizzou. So he's got a little he's got a little funk to his style, or at least he's not afraid to get a little funky. Um, but, you know, he's really talented, man. He's, he's 13 and 0 this year. He won a Big 12 title um, last week um, or I guess two weeks ago now. He, I mean, he's, he's got a 44 to four takedown advantage over his opponents this season. He has just, he's got a, he's all, ga like Doug, Doug Schwab literally said he's all gas all the time. That's how he trains. That's how he competes. Um, and so, you know, that's a guy that I think can actually do some pretty big things this week. He could see Nelson Brands in the quarterfinals, but actually on Thursday morning, his first match is against Iowa State's Sam Colbray. Um, oh. So, you know, and they had one heck of a match when Iowa State wrestled Northern Iowa earlier this year. Keck Eisen scored a takedown in the third period to win that one four to three. Um, so that'll be a really exciting match on Thursday's first round. Um, yeah. And then if Brands can kind of navigate a pretty tough quad and, and you know, meet Keck Eisen in the quarterfinals, I think that'd be really cool for the state of Iowa. But also, you know, winner gets to go to the semifinals. And, you know, if you reach the semifinals at the NCAA championships, that's an automatic top six finish All-American status. So um, a lot more riding on that one than just kind of maybe a little in-state rivalry for sure. But let's talk a little bit about you and I. I mean, six wrestlers in, just kind of sum up the job that Coach Schwab has done up there to really keep you and I in a national spotlight for a school that, you know, is, is considered smaller by many accounts. Yeah, they're, they're considered a mid-major program by wrestling standards, and I think by, by most athletic standards, right? I know basketball gets a little bit more love just because of the job Ben Jacobson's done up there and, um, you know, the way they routinely compete in the Valley. But, you know, wrestling, it's a little different. Um, you know, they wrestle in the Big 12 Conference um, as an affiliate member, so they, they get their hands on some pretty tough wrestlers throughout the year. 
Um, you know, and this was kind of a this was kind of a weird transition year where they have some talented guys like Parker Keck guys and like Brody Teske who transferred in from Penn State. He's been tremendous this year. He was a Big 12 champ at 125 pounds, and um, you know that's a guy who could potentially make a run to the NCAA semifinals as well. But um, you know, bread and butter for Doug Schwab really the last few years has been in-state guys, and, and you see a lot of that in the qualifiers that they have this week. There's Brody Teske who's from uh, Fort Dodge. We mentioned him. Parker Keck guys is from Wisconsin, but heavyweight Carter Isley uh, who's from Albia. Um, you know, Tristan Lara at 149 pounds. He's also from Fort Dodge. Um, so, you know, they Austin Yant at 165 pounds. He's from Waverly Shell Rock. Um, Lance Runyon from Southeast Polk. He was able to sneak in in an at-large bid um, at 174 pounds. So a lot of in-state flavor there for the Panthers. Um, it's still kind of a transition year. I think there was a lot of growth and a lot of learning, um, you know, that took place this past season with them, just kind of taking some lumps here and there. But I mean, you also saw some growth from those guys. Um, they have a pretty talented freshman class. It's only going to get better, um, you know, and then you kind of have, you know, bedrocks with guys like like Keck guys and, and Brody Teske. And I think Tristan Lair is another guy who can be really, really good moving forward. And, um, you know, I, I, huge credit to Doug Schwab for, you know, the job he's done there over the course of 11 years. But just to be able to sustain that as well. I don't think people had high expectations for the Panthers this year. They finished just inside the top 25 nationally um, in the team race. So, um, you know, this is a program that's they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's put it that way. And you mentioned Brody Teske and, and, you know, he's a guy that when he announced Penn State initially out of high school, there's a lot of chatter about it. Now he comes back to you and I, and he's a five seed entering this tournament at 125. Unfortunately, that means he'd have to go through Spencer Lee if he makes the semifinals. But what can you say about Teske's kind of transformation at, at you and I and how it's probably benefited him making that move back? Yeah, it's been it's been really fun to watch this year, man. He I mean, he's a guy that is going to score a lot of points. He might give up a few points in the process. I think the very first match he wrestled this year was, um, you know, they were wrestling South Dakota State and he was down eight to one within the first minute. But by the end of the first period, he had taken a 10 to nine lead and then he ended up winning that one by a major decision. So um, it's been really fun to kind of watch him. You can tell he's having a lot more fun in the sport. Um, didn't get a lot of competition opportunities while at Penn State. He got to wrestle here and there a little bit, but just being back home, um, you know, he's one of four Fort Dodge wrestlers that were in the starting lineup at one point this year for you and I. Um, he's not very far from home, so he's able to see his family a little bit more and just the comfortability of being back in Iowa. And then on top of that, um, him and Schwab just click, man. I mean, there's something maybe in wrestling more than a lot of other sports um, where coaching matters, right? Coaching matters a lot. And so him and Doug Schwab, this, they, they click, they're of similar minds. And um, I think you're really seeing that with Brody this year. I mean, he's, he's 12 and one. His only loss this year was to uh, Brandon Courtney from Arizona state. Who's the three seed this week. He won a PAC 12 title two weeks ago. Um, so, you know, Brody uh, winning a big 12 title, not super surprising, seeing him in contention or in position at least to perhaps finish as an all American, his first year back in the state of Iowa, um, that'd be a tremendous feat for him, a tremendous feat for the program. And, and something that Schwab can kind of tell people, you know, Hey, like, you know, this guy was a superstar coming out of high school, things didn't work out, but he came here, he found a home and, and not just found a home, but he found some success along the way. So, and he's only a sophomore too. So whatever yeah. he's able to do this week, um, you know, you and I fans, I think are going to be pretty excited because they're going to get to see him do a little bit more of it too over the next two or three years for sure. And that takes us over to Iowa State too. Let's talk about the Cyclones a little bit. Eight wrestlers in and, and you look at their their lower weights. They've got some freshmen making this field. How big is that for for Coach Dresser to really get these guys some experience like this this early in their careers? Oh, yeah, it's huge. I mean, you know, this year the NCAA offered the, uh, you know, the free um, – you know, waiver of eligibility so that, you know, everybody, kind of, it was kind of a freebie year, right? Like that's yeah. kind of what we've been calling it. Um, you know, but that for wrestling specifically, that offered a really unique opportunity because a lot of times freshmen will come in and they'll redshirt, right? They'll go mm -hmm. to a handful of open tournaments. They'll, they'll wrestle other freshmen or they'll just kind of get their feet wet when it comes to division one wrestling. And, um, you know, they don't get the big time opportunities like this because of the freebie year. Um, a lot of programs like Iowa and especially like Iowa State, you know, they, they were allowed to wrestle these true freshmen right out of the gate just to kind of see where they're at and um, a tremendous learning experience for these guys. And then what, what Iowa State, I think, really learned was that a lot of the freshmen they brought in were, were pretty talented right out of the gate because you look at, you know, specifically 125 pounds, 133 pounds, Kyson Tarakina um, and Zach Redding. Those guys replaced, you know, Alex Mackle, who was, you know, a Big 12 finalist, multiple time NCAA qualifier. Um, for the Cyclones who, who decided to leave the program. He's just kind of moving on from wrestling. And then Austin Gomez as well, who was in the blood round of the NCAA championships. I mean, it's just one win away from being an All-American a couple of years ago. 
Um, that's a lot of talent to have to replace. And these two true freshmen, literally one year removed from high school, step in and they're, they're competing at the national tournament. So, um, you know, that's big for Dresser just to kind of, you know, show that he can recruit pretty, pretty talented wrestlers right out of high school. But also just, you know, it's kind of a credit to the program, too, that they're able to take these guys one year removed from high school, help them develop over the course of a year and get them in the national tournament. So, I mean, it, especially, you know, Zach Redding at 133. This is a guy that's come in from New York. Um, looked really, really good at the Big 12 tournament in a third place finish at a really, really tough weight. Um, you know, he's kind of probably considered a dark horse guy to maybe make a run um, at the podium this week. Um, so we'll see what happens. He could wrestle Austin DeSanto from Iowa in the second round if they both win their first match. So that'd be a kind of a fun little Cyhawk battle there on Thursday evening. But um, no, these guys have done a tremendous job and it's been really fun to kind of watch these freshmen learn on the fly over the course of the season. And Terrakina is kind of in that wrestle-in match to open things up. And if he wins that, he gets Spencer Lee. So we get some Iowa-Iowa State player early on. And that will be an experience for the freshmen, too. But um, the one that stands out for me is David Carr. I mean, the sophomore has just been dominant this year. 15-0 and record, uh, four pins, four tacks. Closest decision was like 4 nothing or an 8-4 decision that he had. Um, how electrifying has this kid been to watch in person? He, Dude, he's he's – it's probably not quite the same like super recruit or super talent that like a Spencer Lee is. Um, but he's like, whatever the next step down is, that's kind of where David Carr's at. Right. I mean, he's got a lot of international success. He won a junior men's freestyle world championship a couple years ago. Um, you know, he, over the course of the last two seasons, I believe he's like 32 and one. Um, and his only loss in his college career so far is to Northwestern's Ryan Deacon, who's the number one seed. He was a big 10 champ, um, you know, the past two years. So, you know, David Carr, he's, he's electrifying. He, I mean, this is a guy that as soon as the whistle blows, he's in on a shot. Um, he's got multitudes of way to finish shots, to score points. Um, and he talks about that all the time, just kind of going out there on the mat and relishing the opportunity and trying to have some fun out there. And, you know, I think this week could be a really big opportunity for him. Um, you know, he's the three seed at 157 pounds. Um, I, he's got a pretty tough path in order to get to the semifinals. But, you know, I, David Carr has kind of spent the last two years looking up to the top two guys at this weight class. And that's, you know, Deacon from Northwestern, but also North Carolina State's Hayden Heidley, who um, that's a guy from Pennsylvania. He was in the NSA finals a couple years ago. Um, David Carr has kind of been chomping at the bit to try and get his hands on those guys. He's wrestled them both in, in the freestyle setting, but uh, freestyle and folk style are just different enough that, um, you know, you wonder what that match might look like, um, you know, if they were able to wrestle in folk style, right? And he might get that opportunity this week if he's able to take care of business on Thursday and Friday. So, which I think would be really exciting for him. It'd be really exciting for the program because, you know, the NSA semifinals are on the main ESPN channel this week. The NSA finals are on the main ESPN channel this week. So that could be, you know, great coverage for, for the Cyclones to be able to get that Cardinal and Gold out to, you know, millions of homes in a situation like that. Um, but also a real big opportunity, obviously, for David Carr to kind of prove that, you know, he can hang with those best guys in the country and not just hang with them. But, you know, I, th I think he he could potentially beat them as well. So I, th I think he's that talented. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with him this week. And you talked about the 285 pound weight class kind of being a one, two and then everybody else. And among those is Gannon Gremmel. Um, You know, he's the six seed coming in. Only lost came back in mid-February this season. What uh, what have you seen out of him? He's been aggressive, man. He's, he's been, he's found different ways to score points. He's found different ways to win matches as well. Um, in the big 12 finals, he wrestled Wyoming's Brian Andrews um, and Andrews beat Gremmel for the big 12 title last year um, was just kind of able to, I think he, he was able to score a takedown in the first or second period and, and able to kind of hang on to win that match three to two this year. Gremmel didn't allow for that opportunity. You know, they went through a scoreless first period. Um, Gremmel was able to escape and then uh, Gremmel actually rode Andrews out the entire third period. So he was able to win that match two zero with the riding time point. Um, so, you know, we, we've seen him just kind of get a little bit more creative in how he's able to win matches, um, you know, and you, you mentioned, you know, just kind of heavyweight being kind of the top two dogs and then everybody else battling out for third. Um, I would throw Gremmel into that mix. And, and I actually really like his NCAA draw. I don't know how often people look at the NCAA brackets, probably not nearly as much as I do. Um, but, you know, he's the sixth seed this week. Um, you know, I like his path to get to the quarterfinals where he'll presumably meet a pretty tough wrestler in Central Michigan's Matt Stencil, who is a MAC champ this past year. Um, he's the three seed this week. That's a winnable match, I think, for Gannon Gremmel if he brings his A game. So that'll be a pretty important match for him on Friday morning. And, um, you know, again, bringing it up uh, the quarterfinal round, if you win, you're, you're an automatic All-American. I think Gremmel, I don't think it should be uh, ruled out that Gannon Gremmel could potentially get to the national semifinals this week. I think he's been that good this year. All right, for each of the three schools, give me your best chance of winning a national title, not named Spencer Lee. <laughs> um, I, for Iowa, I think I, your best odds are probably Michael Kemmer, um, you know, at 174. 
Um, you know, I think there's really only a couple of guys that have truly the, the, the combination of speed, endurance, and technique that can probably beat him. And both of those guys, I think, are on the top side of the bracket. So if he's able to kind of navigate the path um, and especially Friday, because I think he'll take care of business on the first day on Thursday. Um, if he can kind of navigate the, the treachery that comes with Friday's um, competition, um, I like his odds to take care of business on Saturday night. Um, for you and I, um, your best odds, I, I you know, I, I maybe probably Parker Keckeisen. Um, you know, if, if the seeds hold, he's going to have a really tough match in the, uh, in the semifinal round against Penn State's Aaron Brooks, who is a Big Ten champ and um, a guy who, I mean, that's another name to probably watch as we look forward to the Olympic trials here in a couple of weeks after this too. But, um, you know, that's a guy that Keckeisen has wrestled before. Um, it was, again, it was in a freestyle setting. So how does that match look in a folk style setting? Um, if Keckeisen is able to kind of bring the, his motor and his gas tank that he's kind of been, he's made himself known to be, um, this past year, um, you know, I, I, I'd like his odds in that match to, you know, if he can score, especially if he can score a quick takedown, if he can do that, I mean, that kind of changes the, the direction of the match. And then for Iowa State, um, I really like David Carr's odds. Um, you know, I think he's, he, this is a guy that that tends to step up much bigger and wrestle much better on the bigger and better stages. Um, and when it comes to collegiate wrestling, there is no bigger and better stage than the NCAA championship. So it's going to be a tough path for him. But, um, you know, I think that's a guy that absolutely can get it done this week. Gonna be a fun week for sure. Now I gotta ask too, non Iowa, Iowa State, you and I tied brackets. What what weight classes are you most excited to watch overall, just because of the talent of wrestlers? Yeah, I think uh, you know there's a lot of talent at, at virtually every weight, but I think maybe the the two weights I'm most excited for, and and the Iowa Iowa State you and I connection is is part of why it's so exciting. It's probably 149 pounds and also 197 pounds, just because of the the parity and and how wide open I think those weights are. Um, you know, at 149. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are kind of lightly penciling in Ohio State Sammy Sasso as, as the potential favorite. But, um, you know, North Carolina's Austin O'Connor. That's a kid from Illinois just over the state border who's really, really tough. Um, you've got Max Muir in there, Tristan Lair there, Iowa State's Jared Deegan, who's there. Um, Dagan, excuse me, I mispronounced that. But he, you know, he's a past All-American. Uh, Max Muirin has um, a pretty quick opportunity at redemption if he wrestles really well on Thursday. Tristan Lara from you and I got a pretty tough first round match, but if he can get through there, um, I don't think it's out of the question that he could potentially get to the quarterfinals. Um, there's just a lot of talent at that weight. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then at 197, um, kind of the same thing too. You've got, you know, Iowa's Jacob Warner. Um, you've got, um, you know, I Iowa State's Marcus Coleman looked really, really good at the Big 12 tournament um, there. You've got, uh, you know, I, South Dakota State's Tanner Sloan, who's an Albertette grad, so he's in the mix there. And then you've got, you know, the combination of a lot of young talent and established talent. Um, you know, Michigan's uh, Miles Amin was the Big Ten champ at this weight at 197. Um, that's a guy that's going to potentially compete at the Olympics for San Marino. Um, you know, Oklahoma State has a really talented true freshman in A.J. Ferrari. Uh, Nebraska's got a tough wrestler there in Eric Schultz. Arizona State has a tough wrestler there in Cordell Northley. That's a bracket that could really unfold six, seven, eight different ways, and none of it could surprise me. Um, you know, and then you look at guys like like Tanner Sloan and like Jacob Warner. You know, they could hit in the quarterfinals, and the winner of that one, I think, has all that it takes to potentially win this weight. So it's it's one of those weird wide open weights where, you know, the guy that's on over the course of the three days of the tournament is going to win it. Um, and it could be any number of different guys. So it's I, that way. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. 149 is going to be a, a really fun weight to watch. There's I mean, every bracket's going to be most fun to watch. But those two specifically, I think uh, people really need to keep their eyes on. The other thing to keep an eye on is team race. Iowa chasing down that that title this year. How well suited are they to make that push for a team title? Yeah, it's their tournament to lose, man. Um, you know, they they won the Big Ten tournament uh, two weeks ago, which, you know, the Big Ten wrestling is, I mean, it's like it's like uh, SEC football, man. Like, that's where all the talent is concentrated. That's where a lot of the best wrestlers um, compete in every single year. That's where the best programs have been. Um, you know, Penn State has obviously won eight of the nine, eight of the last nine NCAA titles. Um, Ohio State has won before then. And then before Penn State's run, Iowa won three in a row. Um, so that's just, that's kind of where, you know, that's where the best guys are. Right. And so Iowa won the big 10 tournament going away. I mean, they won it by 35 and a half points. That's the largest margin of victory for a big 10 tournament champ since 2010, when Iowa also won it by 37 and a half points. And so then they turned around at the NCAA championships and, and won that match, won that tournament going away. 
Um, you know, I think they, they have the opportunity to do something really, really special this week. Um, you know, I'm not saying that they're going to get 10 all Americans, but I think that opportunity exists, you know, if that, you know, uh, eight of their nine guys or eight of their 10 guys that they've got wrestling this week are seated fifth or better at their weight. Um, so, you know, worst case scenario, they turn out to be all Americans if they wrestle their seeds. Um, and then you've got guys like Max Mirren and Nelson Brands who, you know, if they do what they're supposed to do, they'll put themselves in the blood round and that gives them an opportunity to potentially become all Americans as well. So, um, you know, I don't know if they'll get 10 all Americans only that's only ever happened once in NCAA wrestling history, but, um, you know, they, they've at least put themselves in the opportunity to at least be in that conversation. Um, and when it comes to the team race, as long as they do what they're supposed to do, I really don't think any team has the combination of firepower and talent and depth to, to run them down. It's their tournament to lose. They could lose it. We saw what happened with Grandview earlier this year, yeah. the NAI national tournament. Um, you know, but as long as they take care of business and do what they do, um, I, I, I could see them clinching it sometime Friday night or even Saturday morning. What has Tom Brand said about the team race, if anything, has he talked much about it all at it, about it at all this year? Sorry. Not, not a whole lot. You know, I, we asked him, you know, how do you celebrate the big 10 tournament team title, their second one, um, in a row, knowing that there is still bigger things to be had right with the NCAA championships. And, you know, I mean, he basically said something to the effect of, you know, Hey, we, we need to celebrate this and we need to, you know, congratulate our guys on their accomplishments. Cause I, a lot of people need to remember that, you know, that program was shut down due to COVID-19 issues for all, basically a month. Right. And so between their last duel and the big 10 tournament, they didn't really wrestle live competition at all. Um, you know, they were probably able to simulate a few things in the practice room to just kind of keep their guys ready. Um, you know, but then they were able to come out and, you know, they wrestled like gangbusters at the Big Ten tournament and they just they, they looked like the number one team in the country. So, um, you know, I don't know that he'll be fully satisfied or fully celebrate what the team has done until they take care of business this week. Um, you know, but that's kind of what he said after the Big Ten tournament. You know, hey, we, we shouldn't discount this. We shouldn't not appreciate the accomplishments of the of that weekend. Um, but there are still bigger things for them to chase and they have bigger goals. And last year it was taken from them because of COVID-19. This year it looks, you know, it looks like we're going to be able to get the tournament in without too big, uh, without too many hiccups. And, um, you know, I know they're excited to run it down. It's been 11 years since they've last won an NCAA team title. So I know that they're, they're pretty antsy to get the job done this week. And I got to ask, what's your week look like? I mean, what what does your day of wrestling coverage standard look like this week? It's going to be, you know, I, we, we've got some basically got podcasts and stories every week. Um, you know, I, I started that yesterday. I mean, you mentioned the, the Parker Keck guys story. I'm actually writing something on David Carr today. That'll be out. Then we've got another story on Spencer Lee. That'll be out tomorrow before the tournament gets started. Um, you know, and then it's kind of, you know, for Thursday, Friday and Saturday, it's basically an all day thing, you know, how, you know, watching all these matches, um, you know, cause there's Iowa, Iowa state, you and I, but then there's also, um, you know, I, a lot of Iowa um, high school kids, you know, we mentioned Tanner Sloan um, from Albernet, um, you know, Cade DeVos from Southeast Polk also wrestles for South Dakota State, uh, Zach Price, who's from Johnson, also wrestles for South Dakota State, um, you know, Minnesota's Michael Blockus, who's from New Hampton and Crestwood, uh, he used to wrestle at UNI, transferred up to Minnesota this past year, he's out there wrestling, um, you know, there's, there's a handful of Iowa ties, you know, all the way through the tournament, so you know, we'll basically just be sitting and watching wrestling Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, which, um, you know, I, everybody who's ever seen me at the state tournament knows that that's, it is basically like Christmas to me, especially at this, this level, at this stage of the season, and with this level of wrestling that we're going to get to watch, so um, it's going to be busy, got a lot of work we need to get done before we get to Thursday, but once we get to Thursday, it'll be smooth sailing all the way through the weekend. And also not a lot of sitting from what I've seen from you at those, at those tournaments, you stand a whole lot, and you're into it as much as these wrestlers are, so appreciate all the coverage and all the help uh, you give along the way you're my insider so to speak for anything wrestling you're attached to these guys way more than i am uh, able to be so i appreciate you taking the time today yeah thanks for having me john i appreciate it all right